is a rock legend. He's America's favorite gigolo. We're gonna watch him perform in just a bit, but first, let's hang and talk to David Lee Rock. VMAs? What's wow. what's crazy about that? Yeah. You were there. You I saw, saw it. you at the VMAs. Everybody was anybody is at the VMAs. Did you have fun? Oh come on, it's the front bumper of American popular culture as we know it now. You've got you've got a Korean kid with dreadlocks driving around with a black lesbian on an Italian Vespa. What's the hate about that? You know? That's that, and that's just one act. They're on was that Sony. A TV performance? I don't know what. <laughs> That's the culture, man. Yeah, that's, that's what's going cult. on. You got the hip hop. You yeah. have characters who are coming off, like yeah. Linkin Park. Come on. Yeah, Linkin Park was good. Oh, you know, and it's the age of the remix. So if you liked it once, you can like it six times. You know, <laughs> it's, it's the Honda principle: too good for better. <laughs> I haven't even asked a question yet. That's what's great. The name of this segment is just BSing with Dave. What else? What else is in that mind of yours? You got a lot of stuff. I saw okay. you with with Sammy Hagar at the VMAs, and I can never just get a grip on like you know what's the vibe it seemed cool because you came out and crowd was like yeah and then just so you're throwing daggers at each other a little bit well you know some of the best fist fights happen over who's gonna go top bill behind the peace festival in russia this is the stuff that you never hear about really right truthfully fight and we just wear it right here and we go there's a rivalry here rivalry brings out the best in anything i don't care if you're designing shoes or creating a rock band i don't care if you're creating a country or something political you have to have rivalry it makes you push and we wear it right here and we say yeah i'm not overly impressed with the other guys the audience is and it's great and it's exactly the kind of conflict that you want an audience to get in the middle of right. because yeah. both guys would rather effing die than have a bad night <laughs> Time. I'm exhausted already. Oh, come on. We had a great time, and it's the kind of mix-up that nobody ever really wins. You scream, all right, rematch, see you next spring. Now, 96, the VMAs, we thought Van Halen was getting back together, and that all went to hell. Right after the thing, like, I don't know what happened the there. The failing of Van Halen at MTV. Right. Hey, look, if Eddie Van Halen... Can it ever happen? I mean, oh, can it ever at just go down? At some point, it seems like an inevitable, because this is the kind of music that is as familiar to you as the McDonald's arches. This is right. familiar to you as the Nike swoosh. Whether you've bought or thrown away one of my records, you know these stentorian tones rip-assing out of some kind of a <laughs> flatbed truck at a right. Burger King drive through at how many spring breaks? Right, yeah. I know that voice. I've brought, I have brought a smile to the hips of people around the world for yes, many you summers. Have. Right? Yeah, no. You should run for office. <laughs> I, I am currently running, but I not for are. office. <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned like Lincoln Park, and you meant some of the remixes and stuff. No, we're getting along. Yeah. <laughs> Subtext. That's Listen, the best let me tell you, I've been I've been at MTV for five years, and we had Gene Simmons of Kiss on here. We have David Lee Roth now, and there's definitely something that I think that our audience, and you can agree or disagree, is missing with with musicianship and music the way that it was with when you were there. And you mentioned something like a Lincoln Park, where a song gets rehashed four times. Do you feel like younger people today are getting robbed from mm, from the music that you made? I think the definition of musicianship changes, you know, from generation to generation. And you can take a turntable and you can make that sucker sing, whether you slow it down or speed it up, or you could feed it through the generator or whatever. It actually is a musical instrument now. What you're talking about probably are the people who spent the millions of hours sitting in a corner playing on a guitar. Well, now you have the same folks spending their time learning how to work the wheels of steel, okay? Right. And yeah, in fact, it is a musical instrument. So what you may be missing in terms of something that's in the rear view mirror, what you have up on the front bumper, is even more adventurous. It's even more crazy and wild but and left even the center. Rock, but even know? the rock star is different from that. You know, we've had Kim well, Rock on the show. Like me, there's baby. no one like you. There's nobody like you. I've been upgraded. I've been upgraded from rock star to action figure. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, really epitomizing all that we know about rock star. David Lee Roth well, used to take a lot of Well, that's the result home. of 20 summers of carefully self-generated bad publicity. Right. <laughs> is the poodle still here? <laughs> uh, but you took a lot of home videos, which I think is crazy, like of the escapades back in the day. 
Oh, you know, when before it was really video. Before. I was about to say, Your Honor, that's an allegation. <laughs> <laughs> you're not in court. Today, you're, nobody does home videos you're not, because you're of... You're not a rock star until you can spell subpoena in this, <laughs> in this country. Do you go back and watch your old home videos? <laughs> your Honor, please. <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, the way I stay ahead of the wave is I don't read anything about myself. Nothing could possibly be good enough, and anything even slightly bad ruins my week. So there's not a piece of paper with my picture on it. There's nothing with my name on it. If I see it on the TV, right. I ask the cats and say, hey, everybody had a good time? Okay. Everybody was sober? Close enough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a there's a little uh, there's a, a little bit of a I guess a less sexy side to David Lee Roth. And, no, there and, isn't. And, yeah. <laughs> well, explain explain your obsession with Huckleberry Finn. Oh come on, Huckleberry Finn is the experience is a child's idea of what an adult is, and isn't that what most rock stars finally arrive at? How many times you know? have you read it? Mm, probably a dozen times, and each time you read something like that, you get an update. I think more importantly, it's just gymnastics for the brain. You Huckleberry know. Finn is. No, reading. You know. <laughs> hey, you can't surf the net unless you can read. If you can read fast, you can just surf that bigger of a wave. Can you dig what I'm saying? Could and you put David Lee Roth on the net? Just like, <laughs> oh, Yahoo, all right, that's cool, all right, brother. What I tell you, what I like tell younger the brain. folks who are, you know, asking, what's the advice? I say, learn to read 24 letters in the alphabet, and then that's, the, then you can use. <laughs> And then you can use it for anything you like, because the Bible is written with the same alphabet my favorite pornography is. That's right. How many languages do you speak? Uh, I can get us in trouble and barely out and for. Hablo suficiente español para hablar contigo solamente en lengua. And, you know, for, is there anybody from Brazil here? Falo suficiente, you know, portugués también. <laughs> Well, I got to be able to wake the up Brazil and... Brazil was bad. I got to I mean, wake Brazil. up. No, I got to wake up in many languages and say my visa expires later today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and don't I get one phone call at least? Yeah, I can make taxi fare in what nine languages. What are some languages? of your other compulsive <laughs> habits? I know you... I, your book you're talking Overworking. about, like scrubbing the floors. You had some weird habit about that. No, that, that comes from kendo. I've been a martial arts. I'm a lifer since I was 12 years old. And, you know, it starts with you mop the floor. So once you have the setup like this, and we didn't do it here, but once you start off a magnificent kind of tour, something is, you know, 70 cities or whatever, you got 120 characters traveling around with you. That is endeavor. How do you show that you're willing to commit every fiber of yourself? You mop the floor like a washerwoman. Right. And at the end of the day, when all the rehearsal is done, right before you charge for the first ticket, you get on your knees and you mop the floor. It's the same way you learn to use a sword, same way you play electric guitar. And then you can charge as much as you want for a ticket and say, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I made the commitment. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna rock out for us a little bit? We are gonna rock you out. David Rock, he'll perform when we get back.